question 19 and it asks a bullet is fired at 200 meters per second at an angle of 20 degrees to the horizontal did i explain to the horizontal yes meaning if your horizontal is there then 20 degrees to the horizontal means anti-clockwise from there 20 degrees so there is your force that is 200 and this here is 20 degrees all right so your drawing should look something like that not 20 degrees finish and claw at 20 degrees it's to the horizontal calculate its horizontal and vertical velocity components so you're going to split it up into its x component and to its y component we call them perpendicular components so they make a 90 degree angle Pookie, which one did you calculate first, Y or X? X? X. Okay, if you want to calculate X, how did you do that? Use the cos of 20 degrees is X over 200. So you get X to be 200 cos 20. And that is what, a Bookie? Say again. 188 meters Per second. All right. So, be sure if you calculate y, what should it be? Say again. Sin. The sin of twenty degrees is y over two hundred. That gives you y to be two hundred sin twenty. And if you calculate that, what do you get? Point eight Sixty-eight point three seven. I think I rounded off to a four, but all right. So I think if you made a mistake here, it's just because you didn't understand the to the horizontal. Your drawing went up there instead of down there. I think yes. Okay, right. Back to your notes. Okay, so we um, are in your notes on page 13, I think. 13. Okay, now these three next three are good multiple choice questions where you must understand a concept okay so for the first one there they say determine tensions t1 t2 and t3 so what we have there is we have an object on a piece of string or rope or ribbon or whatever and it goes up and it comes down up down so we are considering it here or a common sense when <coughs> um, we are at T1 there then there's no tension in the rope okay why because the tension is there and the weight is pulling it down so they are at 90 degrees to one another if you type in um, cos 90 what do you get zero so can you see that the 90 degrees gives you a zero if you were to make a calculation? Okay, so we can just immediately say, well, at T1, the tension is zero newtons, and our common sense tells us that. No explanation. 
x is 0. Alright, then we're going to look at T3 quickly. Okay, at T3, if I were to draw a free body diagram or a force diagram or a vector diagram, then I have two forces there. I have the tension T3 going up and I have the weight of the object pulling it down. So I have those two forces. Where's Antoinette? Okay. Now, when we swing it, like this, is the object, when it's down here, going up and down like this? No, it's swinging actually left and right. Okay? So because it's not going up and down like that, we can say in the vertical, it is stationary. In the vertical, it's not going up and down. In the horizontal, it's moving. But in the vertical, it's not going up and down. So, because it's not going up and down there, it means that these two must be equal in size. So, it means that T3 must be equal to Fg. And here I tell you that it is 20 newtons. Okay, right. Now we're going to get to the difficult one, but it's actually not that difficult. We're going to get to T2. Now first I want to draw on T2. You can see there is the weight gravitational force going down towards the center of the earth. Right? Then we have tension. What direction is tension? Is it up in the rope or down? Up in the rope. Always away from the object. Okay. Now, there's no one pulling it to the right or pulling it to the left or whatever. We have these two forces. Okay, when I swing it, is my hand touching the rock? No. It's touching the rope, the rope is touching the rock. So these are the only two forces acting on it. Okay. Again, the object is swinging to the right. Ne? It's not swinging like this. Swinging like this. So we can take this T and we can split it up into its two perpendicular components. It's X and it's Y component. Okay, now they are called perpendicular components. Now inside this triangle, I need at least one other angle. Can someone find it for me? For a sweetie. And why? You can tell me. You can give me anyone. Except obviously 90. I want inside this triangle, I want another angle. The size and why you say it is that size. Do you want Why? Yes. This is horizontal. This is horizontal. There is a line crossing it. So this one and this one must be the same size. So this one here is 45. Is it the... Oh, sorry. Is it the mathematics that you like? Okay. Right, so we have 45. Okay, so let's see. We want to find this T. We have this angle is 45. So we need at least X or Y to be able to calculate T. For two sweeties. <laughs> Can someone give me the value of one of the two, X or Y, and why you say that? Yes, Mama? Why? Yo, that's one, sweetie. The reason, yeah, but the reason is incorrect. The reason, I'll give another mark. Another sweetie to Anna. Oh, 
<laughs> your idea is there with your wording? Cut it in half. Appreciate it. Yeah? What did I show? What did I do with the rope? It's not going up or down. Who said that? Okay, so, woo! That's a good throw. This um, rope on this block is not going up and down like this. So it means the up force must be equal to the down force. Same thing here. The up must be equal to the down. So that is why this one and this one will be the same size. Okay, so now I'm just going to draw this triangle again because it looks horrible. In this triangle, we want T. This is 20 and this is 45 and that's 90. We want to calculate T. That's actually called T2. Um, where am I with my questions? I haven't started yet. Where did I start? Well, okay, what's it, boo? How will you calculate T2? Uh, cos <laughs> you must know that. <laughs> Just choose one. You're either wrong or you're right. Sin. No, but Sibu. You're wrong, it's sin. Okay, so it's the sin of 45. Remember, it is opposite over hypotenuse. Oh. Oh. All right, if you calculate that, I'll give you the answer is 28.28 newtons. Okie dokie. So, ma'am, how is this a multiple choice question? I can ask you, um, given this scenario, where will the rope experience the greatest tension? Okay, then I'll say A, D1, to a B, D2, C, D3, or D, all of the above. Then your common sense must tell you, all right, here yeah, the rope is almost like a noodle, and here it will pull down stronger. So it will be C, D3. You get it? Yes. Okay. Next one is Is it easier to push or to pull the trolley? As you can see, there's a trolley, and we don't know why, but someone is pushing or pulling it over loose sand. Okay. Not, not that clever. Right. So which one will be easier? To pull. Why? Uh, we need to tell Wana. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Boki? Yo, that is beautifully said. That is it, sweetie. Yo, guys, I'm generous today, huh? Generous. Yo, Amper is liakwe dead. All right. So, when you push down, then there's a force that goes down on into the ground. And when you pull, you, there's a force, part of it pulls it up out of it, the sand. Okay, so here um, it pulls out of sand and here it pushes down into sand. So which one is obviously easier to pull it out of the sand? Okay, so the important part here is your arrows, 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 arrows for your components as well. Okay.
Next one. Going, going. Gone. They say, why does the combi window tilted at 45 degrees offer less resistance to a wind force than a window tilted at 60 degrees? Okay, so I think the school has a bus that looks like this. Hey? Yeah. Eh? With the yeah. curtains. Yes. Yeah. No, but no, sorry, not a bus bus, like a, a sprinter. I think they call it a sprinter. And this is a combi. Nee? And if we have a choice as teachers, I think we always choose the sprinter because it's faster. Okay, so why is it faster? Okay, now one of the reasons, it could be the engine, blah, 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 but we are looking at the windows for this one now. Yes? <laughs> His hand was up first. Yeah? Your, if you, anyone explain it? I understand it. No. What's happening with the wind when it's like this? Okay, when it's like this, the wind struggles to go through. Okay, I can see you. You just want to sleep. All right. Okay, now we are going to prove this mathematically. Okay, so we're going to do this here. You can either do it in your writing book, draw it big, or I'm going to do it quite small here at the bottom. So your choice, if you want to do it in your writing book, then you're going to write vectors, page 13, example, combi. Are you all doing in your writing book? Okay, then I'll join you in writing. Okay, so we have vectors, page 13. And today is the 8th of the 2nd. All right, so for the first one, where it's like that, Okay, I just want you to draw it like that, not, uh, don't draw the whole combi. Okay, we're going to show that it's 60 degrees. I'm just going to zoom in on mine. Okay, now what will happen here is the wind comes in. I'm just going to do it here at the top because I want to show something. The wind comes in there. Okay, and they say that force is 10,000 newtons. So it's going quite fast. All right, now... We can split that up into two components. A part of that wind goes perpendicularly onto the window. So I will call this the force perpendicular. Okay, now remember when you do perpendicular, you put your uh, you put your ruler so that it makes a perpendicular angle with the surface. Ne? To make it perpendicular. Alright, and a part of it goes with the window, so I'm going to call this F parallel. Okay, they're also called perpendicular components, so they're 90 degrees to one another. So, inside this triangle, uh, Tawana, you didn't answer. You got it wrong. Try again. Okay, so inside this triangle, give me an angle. Other than 90 degrees. Where? Yes, why is it 60? Alright, wait. 
So, your Bongani, when you when you're actually awake, you know something, huh? You. I think they can all see you are sleeping always. <laughs> all right. So we want to get which force is creating the resistance, the force that goes perpendicular. This one just goes with the windows and it goes over it. But this force is pressing on the window, causing resistance to go forward. Okay. So we want to calculate F per, uh, perpendicular. Um, princess, how are we going to calculate F perpendicular? Sin, cos, or tan? Are you sticking with sin? Yes. It's the sin of... Oopsie. The sin of 60 is F perpendicular over 10,000. And the aqua is on it. Hopefully. Eight thousand six hundred and sixty comma two five and the unit newtons. Okay, so that is the force when it's at sixty degrees. Now I'm gonna draw the window when it's at forty five degrees. Okay, so the force is coming in or the wind is coming in at 10,000. And we split it up into its perpendicular components. If perpendicular and if parallel. They are called perpendicular components. We have alternating angles there. So to calculate if perpendicular here, it will also be the sin of 45. Yes? Zero? Newtons. Okay, so there we proved that a smaller angle will give you a smaller resistance. Okay. You all with me? Yes. Now we're going to go to the last, last, last part of this chapter. Then we start with the metric chapter after this. Are you asking something? Yes? 
it's a grade 11 chapter that you're writing in matric about as well. So when I say matric chapter, I mean you must know this up until matric. Yes, this one's just for this year. The next one is for this year and matric. We'll see if I'm still alive. You don't know. You know, I want to die. I want to go to heaven. Yo. Well, I'm definitely going to heaven. What about them? If it's my time to go, it's my time to go. The Lord will care for the rest. <laughs> All right. Last one. Okay. Now, we have done where we had weird angles like this and we used the parallelogram method. Just let's say we had A and B. We use the parallelogram method to get the resultant. Right? But sometimes you get three vectors, four vectors. Then the parallelogram method will become a bit silly. Okay, and it will become a bit difficult. So what we do when we get more than two vectors is we split all the vectors up into the uh, rectangular or perpendicular components and then we add the components together. Okay, so what must we remember here, man? If you get more than one comp uh, vector, uh, more than two vectors, so three, four, whatever, then, and I ask you to determine the resultant, then you're going to split them up into their components. Or if I ask you, use the component method. Okay, let's read, what does it say? It says, resolve, resolve means um, uh, solve, but, but, but uh, take it apart and put it together. Resolve all vectors into their x and y components. Then choose a positive x direction and a positive y direction. Add all the x components together, add all the y components together, and then draw a rough sketch of the resultant x and the resultant y. Get the direction and determine the size. Okay, so it's quite a long method. All right, so let's quickly see how that will work. Okay, the ask to determine the resultant of the following forces that act on the same point. Okay, so there you have um, a is fifteen. Newtons, B is 10 Newtons, and C is 8 Newtons. Okay, we can see we can take A and split it up into a X and a Y. B is only Y because it's only going down. And C you can split up into an X and to a y okay now i'm waiting for a question but i don't know if it's if i'm going too fast you can also take a and split it up there and there it doesn't matter you'll get the same values or you can take c and split it up there and there it doesn't matter okay what's wrong Because B is only going down. Where do you want to take it to the left or to the right? It's not going to the left or to the right. Okay, are you with me? Yes. Okay. Let's get all the X vectors. Okay. So first we want to get to AX. There's AX. How will we determine that Siamo? Cos. So you're going to say the cos of 30 degrees is x over 15. Sorry, ax. I want to be specific because there will be lots of x's. So ax is 15 cos 30. And if I calculate that, I get what? Yes? Oh. Exactly 13. 12.99. Zero. Okay. B doesn't have any X values because it just goes down. It doesn't go to the right or to the left. 
and C has an X value. Okay, now I'm going to skip this first step. I'm going to write down exactly that. Not exactly that, but in that way, I'm going to say CX will be 8 cos 50. Is it your turn? Yeah. Wait. 8. Yes? 7. Let's wait. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, go. No, I got 5. Yes. Okay. But... A big butt. Okay. Can you see that this X goes to the right? This X goes to the left. They go in opposite directions. So at the end, when I add all the X's together, I can't just add them together because they're in opposite directions. I must subtract them from one another. Okay. And to be able to subtract them, I must do what for them? I must choose what? For me to be able to subtract them from one another, I must do what? I must choose something. So what did you that said it? What did you say? You must choose a positive direction. Because are you going to say 12.99 minus 5 or are you going to say 5 minus 12.99? You must choose which one are you going to subtract from which one. So I think all of you agree that we're going to make right positive because it's bigger. Yeah. You see it? So I'm going to say I'm going to make the right positive. So then this is positive. This is negative. Yes. Um, a Newton, but you only put in a Newton at the end. Of the question you can do it now but it's a bit of a waste okay now we're going to look at the y component the first one a y is going to be 15 sin of 30 degrees can you all see where i get that from First by doing that, then rearranging. But I'm immediately rearranging because I've done this a hundred million times. Uh, but fancy you didn't answer correctly, so your turn. Sorry, did you answer? Yes, what did you say? 7.5. BY will be 10. And CY will be 8 sin of 50. What does that give you? Six point? One to 12. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but Bongani, this one goes down, this one goes down, that one goes up. What must we do? <laughs> if I want to add all three of them together, can I just add them together straight? No, because they're pointing in different directions. So what must I do to accurately add them together? And why will you subtract? Because you chose what? Because you chose this name. You can add them if they're pointing in different directions. Okay, so why do you subtract? Because you... We, we just said this, name. See, there you were sleeping again. We had you for 20 minutes. That's a problem. Boki? You, we must choose a positive direction because then we subtract because the other one is in a negative direction. 
Which direction will you choose to be positive, Bongani? What? No, we're busy with the Y's. You must tell me up or down. Down. Okay, you choose down because we have two going down. Okay, so if we choose down to be positive, then that first one is negative, this one is positive, that one is positive. Okay, now I'm going to get my Rx, my resultant for all the X values. My resultant for all the X values. So it's 12.99 minus 5.14. Oopsie. That gives you 7.85. Because it's positive, our value, it means it's to the right. Because we chose right to be positive. Then if I look at all my Y values, I have negative 7.5 plus 10 plus 6.13. That gives you 8.63. Bless you. And because we chose down to be positive, and because our answer is positive, it is down. Are you all with me? So I added all the X's together, I added all the Y's together. Now, I'm going to draw for myself a little sketch. I have a vector, that's my starting point. That goes to the right, 7.85. And I have one going down, that is 8.63. So the resultant of the two using the parallelogram method once, not a million times, will be somewhere there. Okay. So, how will I calculate the magnitude, the size of R? Using what? Did you read there at the top? We've done this a couple of times previously. Dan, we don't want an angle, I want the size. How will I get that length? Pythagoras. So we're going to say R squared is 7.85 squared plus 8.63 squared. For example, what do you get? Six, seven. All right, now we want the 
angle, the direction. We always take it from our starting point. There's our zero degree line and we want it clockwise from there. Now we know this is 90 degrees. So we're going to make this our theta. So that we can say 90 plus theta. Okay. We also know since this is a parallelogram that if this is 8.63, this is 8.63 because they must be the same size. So, Tawana, how will we get the um, angle theta? Tan. The tan of theta. Princess, are you on it? Seven? Okay, right? Now we're going to put them together. Say, so, okay, this means that the resultant of all of those vectors are 11.67 newtons. Here our units come in. At, and we must remember from there to there, we're going to add 90 degrees to it. And that gives us 137,7 degrees because angle we round off to one decimal. About <laughs> it depends how many vectors you must split up. But it will count about eight, nine marks. That's a lot out of 50. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you only asked this once. All right. So let's just go through this together. You've got a lot of vectors, and I said use the component method to get the resultant. Component method is your two, split it up into your components. Then you already get five marks for splitting that up. Having the correct directions, positive, negative, positive, negative, blah, blah, correct directions. Five marks there. Then you add all of the x's together, you add all of the y's together, you get the directions, you draw them for yourself. You use Pythagoras. If you don't draw it, how do you know you must add 90 degrees or subtract 90 degrees? No, because if you make a mistake here, in any side one question, we don't work with your mistake. So if you make a mistake with one of this, and you add here incorrectly, it is wrong. You see? So that is why I won't give a mark here. What I'll do give a mark for is using Pythagoras. You see? Even though you've got the wrong answers, using Pythagoras you get a mark. Using tan to, to get it, you get a mark. And then you answer. <laughs> Alright. So, your work. I'm very tired. Your, your homework is 20 and 21. Okay? 20 and 21. All right, now 20 and 21, I want to start with you because they, they are two difficult ones. All right, so with question 20, I tell you there that you must uh, calculate the size of the rectangular component of a force of 20 newtons. If it's one component, it's three times the size of the other component. Okay, so this is like a, a mind teaser a bit. So let's say your force is there 20. 
I don't care in which direction because we just want the size. We don't want the direction. They say it, you can split it up into its rectangular components. And then they say one of them is three times the size of the other. So if we make this one... Oh, give me a, a symbol. Egg, can, can I use X? Will it be confusing? I'm going to say A. So if this one is A, that's not a 9, it's an A, then X is 3A. So the one is 3 times the size of the other, and now you must go find A and 3A. So not too difficult. Okay, so I'm going to leave a space open. 421. No, 20, we're not done. Now you must do the calculation. Okay, but with 21, my clue to you. Wait, I want to do this on the next page. Going, going. Gone. 21. It says there, there's a drawing as well. There you have a lorry. Um, and its mass is 688, 880 kilograms. It's parked against an incline of 20 degrees. Now they ask you, calculate the force exerted by the lorry on the road and calculate the force exerted by the lorry on its brakes. Okay, now, first of all, up until now, we've only worked with newtons, not with kilograms. Okay, so we want to take the mass and we want to convert it to weight. The way you do that is you say M times 9.8. We did this on the first page of these notes, I think. So to get the weight, you're going to say 688 times 9.8. And you get 65464 newtons. 65464. What's wrong? 6. Well, ha 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 ha. Sorry, 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 Six, seven, four, two, four. Thank you. Okay, now. That's not all. Um, yes. Okay, now if we draw in the forces acting on this block. We have gravitational force towards the center of the earth. Normal force. What's the direction of normal force? Uh -uh. Perpendicular to the surface. So you put your ruler there so that it makes it perpendicular and you draw it so that it makes perpendicular to the surface. Oh, sorry. Perpendicular to the surface. Then there's friction from the brakes, causing it not to slide down. So there's friction up the incline. Bless you, bless you. Right, so those are the forces. Whee! You... Uh huh? Yes. Okay. And then lastly, if it's not sliding down, the, the lorry is not jumping up and down like this and it's not moving down like this. So it means 
that these two must be equal in size and these three must be equal in size. Which two? Oh, three. Two. These two will be equal in size because the object is not sliding down. So they must be equal and they must be equal.